Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Qasem al -Rafi. I am the support specialist here at the iTrack 365 team. Today's webinar will be about training module courses and groups. This is the third part out of a four part series where we cover the training module at a high level. Today's webinar will be more advanced than usual. However, we will be mainly dealing with the model driven app, the iTrack 365 hub. If you have never experienced the iTrack 365 Hub, it is highly recommended that you do go through our how-to playlist, as well as the parts one and two of the training module. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us on LinkedIn or at support at itrack365.com. And without further ado, let's begin. So when you first log into Dynamics, you'll obviously be greeted with this page. And today's session, we will be going through the iTrack 365 hub. On the bottom left, we want to go into the training section. From there, you want to scroll down into the settings section. And today's topics, we will talk about the courses, the course groups, classes, and exams. And then next week, we'll go into job roles and employee job roles, as well as some training requirements. So to begin, we'll start by adding course groups. A course group will how you group off a lot of the courses into their respective fields. So as you can kind of see here, we have our driver certification, environmental, is it JSA, is it office training, quality score, and so on. To create a new training record, you want to go to the top ribbon, select new. Under name, you will name this one webinar. And then we will hit save to look at some of the other options we have. Now, let's say you want to add a course to this course course group. We can do this in two ways. To add a course, we can either go into the courses section, create a new one by going to the top ribbon, and we can link it in the course group, or we can go into the course groups, open up the course group in question, navigate to related, navigate to courses, and we can link it by hitting new course, which will automatically just link the course group. So both ways you're going to the courses entity. It just depends on where you are and what's quicker for you. From there, you want to name our course. We'll call it webinar course. Is there a parent course that we can look for and link it to? That's possible. Is there going to be an exam? And we'll get into exams later into the webinar. How many retries of that exam will they have? Is there an institution that will be giving this training record or will it be in-house? Obviously, it's not a required field, so you don't have to fill it out. And are there any link URLs that need to be added to the to the to the training or to the course that will help um, the person complete the course successfully? You know, is it a YouTube video, a link at the score, a hyperlink, or a document? The description is just for your internal knowledge. You can navigate to what kind of type of course it is. Is it a customer course, something you're paying for? Is it an internal training or is it third party training? How valid is the training for? And this is very important because it will help understand when the next, it will automatically reoccur. If let's say we say it's valid for 12 months or one year, after that 12 months, it will actually re, re, re notify the individual that they have to redo the course. Is there a length of how many hours it should take? Are there credits to this course? And is there a cost just for your internal notification, for your internal um, records? And obviously the currency of the course itself. So all that's really required though, however, is that webinar course, the course group, and then the valid months is very important. And if it's not something that doesn't need to be recertif recertified, like an, like an orientation to the company, you can just keep it as blank. However, I'll keep it at 12. Once everything is filled out properly, what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit save. Okay, and then from there we want to go into related. And then we can see the classes, the courses. Are there any training that's allowed with this? And we'll kind of get how to assign a course to an individual later in the webinar here. Okay, the next thing we're going to want to do is we'll show you how to create an exam. So what we're going to do is going to look for an exam. And then we're going to hit new exam here. You can see that right away there's no linkage but if we select the name as a webinar exam and then hit save and then if we go back one page search for exam once more we can then link the exam to the course 
right? We'll hit save and link the, the exams together and then go back into the exam. Now from there, we're going to there. We'll kind of walk through the fields here. Is there a passing score or is it just one of those exams to knowledge check? We're going to say there's a passing score of 100, so we'll need to get everything right. Do you want to show them the incorrect answers? Yes or no, it's up to you. And what's the retry option? Do they have the chance when you wanted somebody to retry the course? Is it that they do all the questions over again or do they only retry the incorrect questions? For the header and the footer, we'll show this kind of in the um, at the portal how it looks like. But it's just some more kind of detailed instructions, right? Webinar instructions. Is there a pass message? Congratulations. And then failure as an example. Please retry. And that's kind of just the shell of the exam itself. The next thing we want to do, we want to, we want to create a section at the bottom here in exam sections. We'll hit new section. We'll call it webinar section. Then we'll hit save. From there in the question side, we'll hit new question. And this is where you create the questions um, that might exist within the, um, the exam itself. So the type is always going to be multiple choice. And for the question, we're going to say did you learn anything this webinar smile. We're going to hit save. Yeah. And then on the right hand side, the final step of this is we're going to add answers. So we're going to hit the three dots, hit new answer. We're going to label one as yes with a score of 100. And it's very important that the score will pass the passing score. We'll hit save. Go back. You see is linked and then we'll hit new answer of no with a score of zero and save and close there. OK. So then we'll go back. Back once more. Back one final time back into the main course. And from there you have set up the entire course um, shell. The final thing we're going to show you is how to add a class. So if we go into classes here, it's a bit different than a course. A course usually means it's done um, offline, whereas a class is typically done in turn um, in person. So we'll open up one of the existing classes. We'll go into defensive driving. We can see the name when the class date was supposed to occur. What course is linked to that class, right? Is there an instructor which is done by contacts? Is there an institution? teaching it and where's the location. And on the right hand side, same details as a course. What kind of type of class is this? How valid is the course or class meant for? Length and hours, credits and course cost. From there, if we go into employees, we can see which employees are going to be attending the course or the class. And if we go to contacts for any external third parties, we can see which contacts are attending the class as well. So it's pretty generic setup, just like courses is. All that's required is the name, the date, and it links to a course. So like I mentioned, a class is very similar to setting up a course. All the fields are going to be the same. And then next week, we'll kind of show you how this looks in the portal for your front end users. And we will talk about job roles, linking job roles, and kind of linking those training requirements to those job roles so your users can finish off their courses and classes successfully. And on that last week, that will finish off our training module series for a bit, in which you'll see us in a month on a new module. If you guys have any uh, feedback towards what you guys want to learn, please let us know and we can make that make those accommodations. As always, thank you for joining. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email support at itrack365.com or follow us on LinkedIn and YouTube for more updates and daily videos. Thank you.